A maven, an expert, an authority, a connoisseur, a specialist, a professional, a knowledge king, a rock and roll sports talker. Coons Ford of Security Boulevard is proud to present The Sports Maven with Bruce Posner, a no-holds-barred look at the sports world. Now, here's Bruce Posner, The Sports Maven. Well, our Sports Maven is away from the microphone this morning. Sitting in, this is Wayne Viner. That is Mason, the intern, and on the other side of the glass is Danny Cadu, and we are, the show actually interrupted our conversation, and we're going to talk, last night, most of the sports world spent their time flipping between channels, we have the U.S. soccer win, we've got these baseball games that went on all night, but I'm going to go, and, and hey, today, Maryland is at Ohio State, a big chance to make a statement. Good morning, Mason. Well, it's, uh, it's always a disappointing morning when you don't get to hear Bruce sing uh, bright and early to wake you guys up. <laughs> but what a night it was in the sports world, especially the U.S. soccer world. All right, we'll, we'll start with soccer. Danny was up all night doing six hours of radio, but we had a, a hot take conversation. So I watched the game with Mason, most of the soccer game, at least the first half. We really stayed with it over the baseball and several times I went, wow, look at that. This Pulisic guy, is, he's amazing. He's the best American I've ever seen. And Mason says, well, I said that nothing's proven yet with him. Oh, oh Danny, get, help me out here, man. Uh, what, okay, what, what would you like to see? That, is this the Caps theory? Like it, nothing matters until he starts showing in the, in the World Cup? Like nothing that happens between now and the World Cup matters? I mean, when they did have to win, I'll give it to them. He performed at the top level, All right. but you still haven't seen him against uh, Brazil or Germany. Okay, so he's still the best American player that I have seen. He made some moves out there that would take a any point guard, any wide receiver, tailback, whatever, would go, holy cow, did you see that move? And he's kicking a soccer ball. He played point guard. Is he a natural point guard, Mason, Danny, anybody? I don't really see him as that, especially when he plays in the Bundesliga. He's... A striker, not a central attack midfielder or just a midfielder. Bruce Arena found a way to utilize him the way that the Americans need to. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And the and that's why I'm kind of curious with what you're saying that he hasn't proven himself against the Brazils, against the Germanys. He's playing Bayern. He's playing all these. He's playing all these great Bundesliga teams. He's playing world class talent, and he is a world class talent. And he's shown like a world class talent. Now, granted, it was a game against Panama. It was a game that they very much needed to win, and it would have been. You, you would think it would be Bruce Arena's head if, if they did not win that game. So you're right. It was absolutely not the level of competition that you would like to see. But it's absolutely the level of talent that you'd like to see. Yeah, you only can play against who you're playing against. Right. I mean, he didn't pick the opponent, but he was, to, and I know you don't like Larry Michael who calls the Redskin games, but he was electric last oh, night, God. Mason. <laughs> he really, but he was. Okay. I might, have to, I might have to leave after that. <laughs> The pass he made to Altador and the breakaway that he created, two, two plays where he, he made moves that you just don't see our guys make. This is American-centric, and we are in America. Hate to remind you here. So if he's not as good as Brazil, or he's a, but he's the best one I've seen. Now, I know this isn't soccer week here on the Sports Maven, but I saw a piece on the Bundesliga, on the German team that he plays for, and my God. Goodness, did they get into those games? Oh. And his parents, oh, yeah. uh, Pulisic's parents, went to a game there. And in the warm-ups, his mother said it was so intense that she was crying from the emotion of being there. Uh, the one thing it reminded me of is how the Nebraska football team gets all pumped up in the locker room, and they're, they're so that place is so high that people run in the locker room crying. So that level of emotion is hard to get. And speaking of people who are probably crying at this point, if you're a Red Sox fan. If you're a member of the hated New York Yankees, a global fan club, ah, God, must, must stink being you today. Mason, who are you most impressed with from last yesterday's baseball? I got to say the Houston Astros. The Red Sox, everybody just thought they were going to run right through the Astros, but you just that pitching is just something special. And Altuve, for a little guy, man, does he have a lot of power. He, he, a little guy, and then the little guys win because when that game seemed over, and we were on, I think we were watching the Nationals game at that point, and thought the Yankee game was done, and you see all of a sudden the score changed in live time on the Nats game. 
All of a sudden, it's eight to seven, and another little guy, Lindor. Now, you're talking about some little guys who are amazing, or to reuse the phrase, electric. Uh, Altuve, fantastic. Lindor, although we don't see him as much for some reason, I haven't seen as many games. They are both fantastic. And Cleveland doing what they're doing with a second baseman in center field, and the pitching didn't work out. And you, the Yankees look like they really had it. And then they didn't. But i got to move on to the Nats. We'll come back to the Yankees and the Astros. The Nats keep, continue the tradition. Now, I heard from a source that Danny actually jinxed the team. I, is that true? That, that, that is uh, it, it's debatable. It depends on your, uh, your superstitious leanings. But, yeah, when I was on 105.7 The Fan last night with Tony Kovac, I did jump in, give the update that Mr. Steven Strasburg was pitching a no-hitter through five. We we kind of have an ongoing joke, and you know, Mason and I were talking about it before the air, too, where it's just like, are we really going to start pointing out a no-hitter every time that they make it through the lineup once without giving up a hit? But at the same time, you know, I mean, when we were in the playoffs and it's a big game against the Cubs, I mean, I felt like I had to mention it. And sure enough, right afterwards, uh, Rendon had the error. Then, was it three straight singles to get it to 2 nothing, And just like that. That was it. Lights were out. But you can't, how are you going to have a nine-inning no-hitter, guys, if you can't have a five-inning no-hitter? You have to have, once it gets to five, it becomes a story. People don't talk to you on the dugout. Nobody comes near you. It's baseball tradition. The unwritten rules of baseball start to apply. Now, I think you're breaking an unwritten rule of baseball if you put up, as you said, every third of an inning. Ooh, yeah, it's a five and a third. But it is, boy, it is a big deal. Now, we might not be as uh, frantic and fanatic a baseball fan with no Orioles in there. But no. still, it, it was, yeah, it takes a little bit away. My other takeaway, so the, the little guys carry the day. Looking at an Orioles perspective for this, and, and I think that's the only way Danny might see the world is an Orioles perspective for yeah. this. If I look through these other lineups, we're not lacking for superstar power or big contracts or you, your Manny or you got... Davis, you got Adam Jones. We have players, field position players of this talent. We've done an amazing job around here for not having any pitchers that are nearly, nearly, nearly as good as what we're seeing in these pitching staffs. So when you say the team's not really any good, looking player for player through these lineups, you look at some of the catchers they have and go, well, Castillo hits better than that, whether he's back next year or not, or whoever the catcher is. And you look at some plays that are main, go, well, Manny's better than that, whether Manny's back forever or not. So I don't know how you don't part with any Oriole assets, which is the word from Utah Street, no assets will be moved or no significant assets, and get the pitchers. Danny, you follow this all the time. How do you get top-line pitching without giving anything up? You know, if you're not absolutely hitting home runs, uh, no pun intended, in the draft, I mean, like, I just don't see how it happens. I mean, you have to basically give up. You know, I mean, there's a quid pro quo. I mean, look at what the Astros did to get Justin Verlander. Now, granted, he had a no-trade clause, and he basically decided at the end that he wanted to be part of a winning team. And he's been the difference, basically, down down the stretch. I mean, the Indians would be way far in ahead. And, you know, I, I, I really don't know how the Orioles can continue to fool themselves when they see these other teams out there. Now, I heard a counter-argument last night that you see guys, you know, I mean, what was it, four out of the first six playoff games had their starters knocked out before the first three innings. But at the same time, though, it's, 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 it's pitching that makes the difference here at the, I mean, Cody Allen last night at the end of the game for the Indians, uh, you, you see the, the Astros bullpen holding up strong. You need strong, reliable pitching to keep your, at least your offense, motivated and in it. Wait, wait, I'm arguing here. What do you want, Mason? I think that it showed that you need starters with what the Yankees did. They saw that Sabathia was struggling in the seventh inning. They go to their relievers, and they just blew up. They imploded. Okay. Well, I, I want to go back a moment to what, what Danny said exactly, is that you take some Cy Young-level candidates, and they didn't pitch well last night. You don't get there if you don't have this. Exactly. It's, it's like the the no hitter thing. You can't have nine if you don't get to five. So no, they might they might lose. And speaking of things that might lose, the irrelevance at this point of whoever lost their play in game, that they struggle and make all these trades and all this noise and oh boy we're going to the playoffs. You play one game on the road, you lose and you're done and nobody even remembers if you were in the playoffs. Now I know you can port the Kansas City Royals a few years ago. 
But for the most part, that game, to me, a one-game playoff for baseball only worked when it was the Yankees and the Red Sox in one game. I think the Astros played the Dodgers in my lifetime, a one-game playoff for what was then the National League West. And all these permutations of playoffs that now go on forever. But I still think somehow it's short-changed to go through this whole playoff run you get one game on the road, you lose, and you're done, and nobody even remembers that you made it. Oh, who'd that happen to last year? I can't remember. Who was it, Mason? Well, it was our Baltimore Orioles. I still like the game, though. Yeah, I think I, it adds a lot to the end of the season for the MLB. And if you're smart like the Twins were, the Twins sold anyway. Like, like that, That's just yep. something that you can't forget, especially as an Orioles okay. fan, when, when the Orioles tried to buy in. This, the Indians were able to make that game while simultaneously continuing to invest in their future. And you could say the Rockies kind of did the same thing. Yep. Their big acquisition was Pat Neshek, a bullpen arm. I mean, I, I feel like your, your point is absolutely spot on. For me, I think for the fairness of these teams who are going through a whole, I mean, 162 two game season is unlike anything in sports and it is a big sample size type of sport. I think that wild card round should be if you're being fair a three game series then maybe not a full five or seven, but it should be multiple games. But I'm with Mason. If we're just going purely on entertainment factor, I mean, those were can't-miss games, at least in my household. You can't miss a, a one-and-done sort of playoff situation. I think it was great. I just think the whole thing is too long. That's why I like it as one game. If you go to a three-game things, then they have the travel day like they have right. today for the AL teams. Okay. Uh, sure. All right. So for, for people who might be a little older, and, and by the way, that could <laughs> be me. Longer attention spans? Uh, oh, I don't know about long. Yes, I've been watching longer. By the way, you are listening to Coons Ford Presents the Sports Maven this Saturday and every Saturday here on 1300 CBS Sports Radio WJZAM in Baltimore. If you're going to go through all of this history, it used to be either won the American League or the National League. There was no playoffs. You were just the best team and you went to the World Series. And that was understandable. Then they brought in these uh, championship series, which I believe were five-game series at first. The Orioles, I, I remember they played the Twins. I, re I went to, in 79, they played the Angels. Um, and, and then you add around, you add around. And yeah, it gets, this isn't hockey, but I think that all the moves you make to get here to go out in one game isn't, isn't really baseball-like. It plays great. Football, that's great. Hockey, the playoffs are way too long. Every series is seven games. Even the NBA, it's too long. This is borderlines on too long because we're just used to, some of us are just used to having one series or you just won your league and you went to the World Series. So, I don't know, times change and it's all entertainment value and whatever home run you're watching there. What, what home run is that? That is the Francisco Lindor big-time granddaddy from last night. Man, how was how big was that? I mean, you you have a game where it was eight three. It looked like the Yankees were coming back in the series, and sure enough, Francisco Lindor, the, you know, the Indians break into the bullpen. He hits a home run that looked like it was going off the top of that foul pole, and then next inning, Jay Bruce hits a home run. And then we're in it for the next what hour and a half, two hours, back and forth. It, it, I saw the, the bottom of the ninth. For some reason, I thought Cleveland was going to take it there, yeah, and it, it didn't like happen. It. And yeah. I was like, oh yeah. no, the darn Yankees. I've seen this. In playoffs after playoffs, year after year, darn it, they came back and they're going to waste this. And at that point, you that's the line. I'd rather lose this thing 8-3 to three than lose it 9-8 in the 10th after coming back. It's much more crushing. Uh, but i got to go back to the Nats. I know we got this one segment and we're down to a few minutes here. Jan Gomes, by the way, I'm sorry, just one word. Jan Gomes, playoff stud. He made that pickoff move in the extra innings, hit the walk-off hit. That, that, now that's playoff baseball right there. Now on to the Nats, I'm sorry. Well, yeah, and we should be sorry, because once again, <laughs> in the fine tradition of my Washington Capitals, um, boy, when the moment gets tough, we fold up. We come apart like a cheap suit. I don't understand what has happened between all of those teams. They play within a few miles of each other, but when the pressure's on, they just fold. Mason, I, I feel like I've done you a disservice saying, watch these teams. Because you're in for a life of pain. Yeah, and that, that cheap suit is not coming with two pairs of pants in this case. <laughs> it should after last night. You, you... Um, just a team that has all-stars everywhere. They're the supposed best lineup that there can be in baseball right so, now. I, last night I looked down and said it's the best lineup I've ever seen them have. And they just they folded. They could not hit the ball. Hendricks pitched an amazing game. I'll give it to him. 
And the bullpen of the Chicago Cubs, when it comes down to the eighth and ninth inning, is one of the best in baseball right now. Okay, I'm going to flip a question. You asked me, it probably was around 4 o'clock yesterday, you said, do you like Joe Madden? I'm like, no, you said you like Madden. And I said, you mean the football game? You said, no, the manager. I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, he's fine with me. He does it a little different. And you're like, well, baseball purists don't particularly like him. Why is that? He, they don't like that he does what now the people don't like what the NBA is doing. He rests his players. And in a 162-game season, I totally understand that. Danny, is there a place for that, or, or am, am I, once again, balding, slow, and old? You know, I mean, I think it's very different than the NBA because you're not, uh, especially when you're uh, a team that's, say you're playing the, the Warriors in, in Washington, you're a Wizards fan, you only get one chance a year to see those players. I, I understand that. But, I mean, Joe Madden has a team that is, what, like 35 players deep? I mean, that 40-man roster is loaded with not only, you know, bona fide, now World Series champion players, it's also b filled with absolute top stud prospects. And a anybody that can fill the void, that, can, that that's athletic enough or has enough pop. I mean, we, I mean, it's the same thing with the Indians. You see a guy like Ian Happ who comes up as a second baseman playing center field, playing right field, playing wherever he can fit. Same thing with Javi Baez, who's doing it again this year. I mean, I, I think that Cubs team is the ultimate built to win a World Series team. And I know that a lot of baseball purists, a lot of casual fans are annoyed. But, like, the whole thing with the Cubs is they are, like, ten stars deep. I mean, he can bench two stars and they can still play eight amazing players. Uh, casual fans probably don't notice it exactly and so they don't care and i think a lot of the cubs it's such a national following have you ever been to wrigley i have not that, no. that, that's one of my big blind right. spots in terms of my uh, we, bucket list next time we have to drive to fargo you should come along okay. and do a whole series of shows on the road mason <laughs> your take on getting out to uh, wrigley field this year and i've been all over and that might be the best it was a normal regular game it was the reds and the cubs that might be the best sports experience that I've ever been to. But wow, why? better than beating Penn State in Happy Valley. <laughs> Look, if Penn State was good then then it probably would have been. But why do the Cubs put in John Jay almost every game for <laughs> Ben Zobrist? Yeah. <laughs> Those defensive metrics they'll get yeah. you, Mason. John Jay didn't he's been around a while. Didn't he sign the Declaration of Independence? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that guy's got a career. Yeah, that, man. Longevity. He, he, all right, so I'm going to go back to one, and then we've got a minute left. I'm going to go back to one thing Danny said. I am embarrassed as an Orioles fan because we finished behind teams that sold us some of their best players, and we couldn't put it together from there. We got a shortstop from a team that might be our starter for a while. They finish ahead of us. We have people selling at the trade deadline. They finish ahead of us. So I really like Buck. I really like what's going on there, and they've done an amazing job, again, for not having any pitching. But... You can't finish in last place when other people sold around you. And I really don't know what we have to sell. I don't know what anybody else is going to give us value for. But, uh, well, that's why I'm not a baseball executive. <laughs> uh, Mason, you're, the rest of your big weekend here, and I know we're going to preview in a minute the Ohio State game, but before we go to break here, does Maryland have a legitimate shot going to the shoe today? Probably not, but... As you guys all know, at this point, I'm a complete homer. I'll give them a chance. But we'll talk about it, why they do have that a chance. As a tease. That is that what is. they call a tease. And with that, if Danny is ready, we are going to go to commercial. You are listening to the Sports Maven here on 1300 CBS Sports Radio in Baltimore. Tomorrow afternoon at 1230, it's Double Header NFL Sunday on CBS Sports Radio 1300. First off, fresh off a big win over the Patriots in Foxborough. The Panthers travel to Detroit to tame the Lions. Then at 730, Andy Reid and his Kansas City Chiefs ride in to Houston to battle the Texans on the Great Iron at NRG Stadium. It's Doubleheader NFL Sunday, tomorrow afternoon at 1230 on CBS Sports Radio 1300. It's time for me to talk about Dr. Jeffrey Gaber and Gaber & Associates. The practice specializes in internal medicine and orthopedics. Gaber & Associates have two great locations in Baltimore City next to Mercy Hospital and in Pikesville. Gaber & Associates now has the nasal swab test for quick diagnosis of influenza A and B, as well as the strep throat swab test. Remember, it's not too late to get the flu shot. Other available vaccines are for tetanus, shingles, pneumonia, and HPV. Check out the website at www.drgaber.com. The firm also includes Dr. Jonathan Gitter 
and PAs Dennis Myers and Leon Britton, as well as orthopedists Dr. Doug Shepard. Remember, call Gaybird Associates at 410-653-8840 for the Pikesville office and 410-986-4400 for the Baltimore City office. In selecting a professional, you always look to the backgrounds of the persons involved, particularly involving their experience, competence, and established performance. And Maryland is one number one leader with regard to personal injury claims, and that's the firm of Science & Kirk. Science & Kirk have handled more auto accident cases than any law firm in the history of the state. The Science family is on their third generation of attorneys that extend all the way back to the 1920s. Donald and his three sons make a formidable team representing their clients. Call their hotline 24-7 at 1-800-LAWYERS for assistance. That's 1-800-LAWYERS for assistance from Science and Kirk. Kelly Exchange is your one-stop shop for individual and family health insurance coverage. On kellyexchange.com, you can learn about health care reform, Find out if you qualify for a subsidy, get quotes, compare insurance plans, and purchase coverage. With over 36 years of experience in the insurance industry, kellyexchange.com is the only website you need to help you navigate the complexities and confusion of healthcare reform and purchase quality insurance for you and your family. Visit kellyexchange.com today. Vision Source of Linthicum and Dr. Stephen Polikoff offer the latest in vision care technology. New New wave front guided technology creates high resolution eyeglass lenses. Vision Source of Linthicum announced it is now using wave front technology to prescribe eyeglass lenses that enable the patient to see in high resolution without the surgery. Dr. Polikoff uses the Z View Operometer, the latest in wave front technology, to quickly and accurately map a patient's eyes for irregularities that can cause vision problems such as distortions, glare, and halo around light. This exam produces an eye print. The eye print is like a fingerprint of the eye, and each person's is unique. The eyes on lenses are then made based upon your personal eye print. Dr. Polikoff, located at 413 South Camp Mead Road in Linthicum, has been serving the community for over 30 years. The practice specializes in optimizing vision and has never seen a lens in all that time that has produced results like the eyes on lens. Call 410-859-3111 to schedule an appointment. Baltimore, listen up. If you want crabs, you have to head to the Costas Inn on North Point Boulevard. There is no comparison in all of Maryland for the greatest crabs and crab cakes ever. Costas also serves unbelievable steamed shrimp, Greek salads, and steaks for lunch and dinner. Nick, Pete, and Costas Triantopolis run the perfect restaurant to go with family and friends. Give Costas in a call at 410-477-1975 and tell them the Turp Talk guy sent you. Parsonizing Fine Dry Cleaning, the best in Baltimore. Located at Crondall Corner Shopping Center, 410-356-9600 and Woodhome Square Shopping Center, 410-653-1881. They specialize in fine dry cleaning, expert shirt service, elegant hand cleaning, men's and ladies alterations. They are the best, the Parson Brothers, 410-356-9600. Glad Birdie Transmission celebrates its 55th year in serving the Baltimore, Maryland area with stellar transmission work. My good friend Mark Schwartzman provides factory transmissions remanufactured for sometimes hundreds less than the dealer. Call or email Glen Birdie Transmissions for a free and accurate price quote at gbt-online.com. One year, same as cash financing available. Free area towing. Glen Birdie Transmissions can also supply low mileage used transmissions with a warranty to fit your budget. Don't forget, we work on all imported autos as well. Call 410-766-8500 when you need transmission work. That's 410-766-8500. That's Glen Burnie Transmissions, 7166 Glen Burnie Highway. Welcome back to Sports Maven, presented by Coons Ford of Security Boulevard. Now, once again, here's Bruce Posner, the Sports Maven. Well, Bruce is only a little distance away from the microphone right now, so we're going to bring him in in a moment. This is Wayne Viner, intern Mason, Danny Cadu, and... Live, your Maven himself, it's Bruce. Hey, what an intro, man. What an intro. 
<laughs> do you have a song for us this morning? Do I have a what? Do you have a song to sing us this morning? Yeah, no song this morning. Just, oh, uh, man. Oh. Well, you must hey, be... You know what? This, this, is, this is a huge, huge week for Maryland. I know that sounds crazy. and I don't know if you've talked about it. They've got absolutely nothing to lose. And the odds are that they will lose as a 31-point underdog. But holy cow, if somehow or another they could pull off the crazy kind of upset, it would thrust them into the national picture instantly. Okay, and This is one of those rare opportunities that you get that Maryland seems to get a lot because of their schedule. But uh, I've been thinking about that. But, you know, I don't give us much of a chance at all. But uh, you sound like me a few years ago when we went down to Florida State, and I was so hopeful that I said we're going to win the game. And we only lost. What was that score, Mason? Oh, 63 to nothing. But this is a... Time out. Time out. I didn't say we're going to win the game. I'm saying, that's right, we were 4-0, I think, at the time. We were. We were ranked. We were, but this is a different kind of game. Maryland, just in the whole national picture, whether it's somebody from the outside or the inside, just thinks there's something different about this coaching staff, the recruiting, and the product that we've seen on the field. It is. It is different. I mean, you beat Texas, you beat Minnesota on the road. It's big difference. I saw a, uh, a football, uh, foot, NF, what do you call it, Big Ten and Beyond, a special on P.J. Fleck. In other words, the same one that featured Ty Johnson. And... Uh, this is a special coach. This is a coach that really revs his guys up, and they were undefeated. And to go into their den and, okay, we didn't kill them, but we certainly dominated the game. It, it always was a sense that the, the Terps were going to win. But, uh, you know, when you have a guy like Ty Johnson, just like when Penn State has Saquon Barkley, at any moment a touchdown can happen. And he's proven it. If you give him an inch, it's gone. You know, I watched his high school films. They were unbelievable. Well, And uh, if Randy Etzel left us with anything, it was Ty Johnson. And Jermaine Carter and some of these guys that are big on this team were Randy recruits. But yeah, yet we definitely. haven't seen it. Just like last year, will this run game work today? I, I don't know. We'll find out. It's a good test. And, uh, you know, I, I'd be happy if we keep this game close. Okay, if we just if there's like if there's a dream of it that they don't you know it's not twenty one nothing at the end of the first quarter, which is the way it's kind of been, but uh, this is not the same Ohio State team, and if you catch Barrett on, on a bad day, you never know what can happen. But uh, well, actually, we do. That's an interesting point. Let me go with there's four Buckeyes that were big time in Maryland. Haskins, the backup quarterback, I'll let Mason take a run at that in a second. Chase Young, a defensive end that Maryland was interested in. Keandre Jones, who was a Maryland commit until Edsel left and then Loxley left. And Isaiah Prince, uh, been a starter for three years on the offensive line. So if J.T. Barrett struggles, who does Penn, uh, Ohio State turn to? Nobody. Well, They're not taking him out. Huh? They're but if, if something happens to him, who's the backup? Well, it's Dwayne Haskins, a guy that all Maryland fans are quite familiar with, a Mike Loxley recruit, Bullis quarterback, which is in Potomac. And then he flips to Ohio State at the last minute, which crushed Maryland fans' hearts. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting, and uh, is Max up to the task? And the way they've coached up the quarterbacks, I mean, like you saw the headline on my blog, is that these dudes can coach. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. We have a, a prime-time coaching staff, and that means so much that somehow or another they figure out a way that you're always in it. I mean, look what this guy did at UCF. You go around the country, and uh, uh, the guy in Georgia, I mean, there are samples, there are examples of how guys come and the program changes, and we have one of those guys. And I, it, it took me a while to say it, but when I watched Bortenschlager last week, you have to admit, you had, a, you had an almost faint when you saw how this guy developed in six days from being unsure, unconfident, unready to a guy who was like in demand or in control of the game. I thought it was beyond belief. I really did. I was sitting there in shock. Piggy surprised me, but not like Bortenschlager did. 
Well, Borton Schrager right. is a mystery still to many Maryland fans. If you've never seen him before with a helmet off, go take a look on TerpTalk.com. And uh, there's an interview about five minutes of sitting down with Matt Bor Max Borton Schlager, so you get a sense of the kid. And uh, see what you think. But you're going to see him on national TV today, 4 o'clock on Fox, the Big Fox. Not FS1, but Big Fox. Gus Johnson's got the game call. So we were flipping through all these channels uh, last night. And we even caught some, I know. some of the Maryland volleyball game. But, Mason, you were talking about the soccer team. Yeah, Sebastian so Elney, again. Again. Always. Again, again one, one nothing. nothing. This is the uh, – Sasha's just pulling out miracles every week to keep this team unbeaten or tied or undefeated, whatever the word is. But uh, uh, another win, and, uh, you know, he's just rolling the way. I do want to talk about a performance I saw last night. Obviously, I put on the UConn game because of Randy. I just wanted to see how the team was doing. And, <laughs> you know, it, I, I, it's just, it's not, I'm not kicking him, you know what I mean, because, you know, they're one at four. But I have to tell you something. This quarterback from Memphis, Raleigh Ferguson, and the receiver, Anthony Miller, I don't know if you watched any of it, but Anthony Miller – had 15 catches for 230 yards and four touchdowns. And most of the touchdowns were like contested balls. He was unbelievable. Oh, you could the Ravens use him. He was unbelievable. Well, and, last uh, night up, up there at UConn, they host Memphis. And at 70-31, uh, Memphis takes it to him. I saw Memphis beat UCLA, but my game of note is, you know who else? The only loss that Memphis has is to UCF of all people. It's incredible. The UCF must be, I don't know what they did to beat them, but I guess UCF's defense was better than we thought. The, well, that was, well, no, I don't know if they're, they well, were as they good. Were. People were talking about the UCF defense before the Maryland game, but it just, uh, you know, you got an Oregon disciple coach, and you just it's immediately it's all about the offense, but man, do they have defense over there. Yeah. So, Bruce, right. you, you have a time zone advantage, so these games that ended at 2 in the morning East Coast time, you got to see him a little more in real time. Uh, so I got two questions for you. What did you think Shoot. of Pulisic for U.S. Men's well, Soccer, and what did you watch from midnight to four in the morning? Listen, that's a problem out here, okay, because it's, you know, the night's over at 10 o'clock. But anyway, Christian or Christian or whatever, however they say Pulisic, I will tell you now, if he stays healthy, if he stays himself he will be the greatest U.S. soccer player ever. His first goal was absolutely beyond belief uh, how he single-handedly went through three guys and, you know, knocked it in almost to an open cage. He is something. He had like three or four unbelievable passes, but he was the receiver of six of the cheapest fouls I've ever seen in my life. And it's unbelievable that they didn't just about throw at the whole Panama team. What did and you... I don't know how that's going to end, but whoever he plays for internationally, it's going to get to a point where they're not going to want him to play for the USA. Well, they were because the the German team was offered was it twenty million or forty million for him last year. So this is before his breakout at this level, and they turned it down. They kept him uh, with what's the name of the team? Dortmund. Thank you, thank you, Danny. Uh, so if he's the did have you ever seen any other Americans make plays like that, even just for the yeah. one game? Well, first of all, it should be noted that he grew up on German soccer. Am I correct, Danny? Yes, he did grow up watching German soccer. All right. So, uh, no, I've never seen. You know, I yeah, you know, Landon Landon uh, Donovan had his day, and but there's never been a Christian Pulisic uh, on the team USA. And if they can surround them with the right guys, and I'm not, and I'm no expert on soccer, but it looks like in the offense he's the one guy on attack with uh, with Altidori and uh, I can't think of the other name, Daniel Bobby Cummings, Wood, but yeah, Bobby Wood setting him up, and he he's he's the real deal. He's the guy who you say he is the American that will be the uh, international name. Uh, He's so, just fantastic. He's 19 years old. He is fantastic. So with the few minutes we have left in this segment, Raiders, Ravens, 
What's your take? And and do you have to win the game for it to be a success, or is any sign only, of offensive only, life? Only winning, winning is the only option. This is, uh, of course, you know you'll hear us talk about it a little bit more on the, uh, in the nest tomorrow. But uh, winning is the only option, and that happened when EJ Manuel became the quarterback the last time Joe faced EJ Manuel in Buffalo. Joe threw a whopping five touchdown, five interceptions rather. Uh, Joe's got to come around. I think that if the Ravens go two and three, you have to look at it like this. If the Ravens go two and three, and they lose tomorrow, that means to make the playoffs, they got to go eight and three. I can safely tell you they're not going eight and three with the schedule they have. You know, having, having to go to Pittsburgh, having to go to Green Bay, uh, they're just not going to do it. All right. It's just the schedule's too tough. They're not going to go eight and three. And I think tomorrow is, what do we call it, Wayne? It would be Judgment Day. It's Judgment Day for the Ravens. There's no doubt about it. Uh, Mason, you you have some NFL thoughts here. What what do you got there? Bruce, do you see this game going um, 9-7? EJ Manuel against that Ravens defense. It's another game that the Ravens defense is going to have a chance to actually win them the game, just like against Cincinnati and especially against Cleveland. Yeah, no, you're right, and the defense really, uh, against Pittsburgh, they were beat to death by the run, but, you know, this loss of Brandon Williams is just, it's a little bit overwhelming, you know, and when a guy like Sissel has one tackle the entire game, uh, when he gets manhandled, you know, you need guys who can stop the run, who can stuff it, and you need guys to protect those linebackers in the back, and it wasn't the same Ravens team against the Steelers, and listen, Flat out, Dean P said it. He was out coached. He wasn't ready uh, for the run game that Pittsburgh put up. Livion Bell was phenomenal. The crowd was flat, and uh, the rest is history. And, uh, but uh, tough game. But I want to say a couple things before I go. I know you're up against the break. Uh, I have to tell you, watching it was a trifecta for me last night on baseball. Seeing the Yankees lose the way they did was just awesome. The Red Sox getting blown out again was great. And is it conceivable that the Nats are not going to win again? Oh, absolutely. They've caught it from the Capitals. They might never score again. (laughs) That's just just D.C. sports right there. There's nothing simpler than that. I mean, I know Hendricks is a great pitcher, but shut out at home? At home? (laughs) How does that happen? I I don't know, but it even sounds painful for you, and you don't even really follow the Nats. Brings me back to the um, Washington Post headline that was used a few years ago, Nats bats fail again. Just classic. Yeah, it definitely did. And let's give props to Ovi opening up with a hat trick. As usual, the caps are fast out of the box. (laughs) They're looking good. They're 1-0. Penguins 0-2. I'll take it. Uh, and remember, folks, listen to In the Nest tomorrow, talking Ravens and Raiders, and that's at 9 o'clock here on 1300 CBS Sports Radio. Bruce, enjoy your time away from the microphone. We will talk during the Ohio State-Maryland game. And with that, Danny, you ready to take us out? Absolutely. You are, you are listening to 1300 CBS Sports Radio. This is the Sports Maven. The Bagby's chain has opened up the new Bagby's Pizza and Wood Home Festival. It's pizzas and salads the way you want it. Get the big cheesy for $5.99 or make your own for a little more. Four sauces, many, many toppings, super salads, meatball specials. What a great, affordable pizzeria. Call the new Bagby's Pizza at 443-379-0566. That's the new Bagby's Pizza at 443-379-0566. I just discovered a great little neighborhood gourmet pizza and Italian-type restaurant in the Harbor area. Bagby Pizza on 1006 Fleet Street is just a great, fun place to have lunch or dinner seven days a week. Bagby's features gourmet pizza, pastas, and salads at more than reasonable prices. Service is quick. There's plenty of seating. Happy hour specials Monday through Friday, 4 to 7 p.m. But most important, the food is superb. Bagby Pizza, 410-605-0444. It's my pleasure to welcome the Supreme Neighborhood Market Gourmet again to the Turp Talk family. Now under the new ownership of Andy Huffman, 
Gourmet Again on 3717 Old Court Road continues its tradition of being a specialty food market with all meals, soups, and sandwiches being homemade. My family in all of Northwest Baltimore knows that Gourmet Again is the best market around. Let Gourmet Again cater any party or special occasion that you are having. I absolutely love Gourmet Again. Call 410-484-9393. Gourmet Again is open seven days a week. Visit them on the web at GourmetAgain.com. The phone number, once again, 410-484-9393. That's Gourmet Again. Cunningham's of the Bag Beast chain has been declared as one of the best restaurants in town. Located at one Olympic place in Towson, Cunningham's has free valet parking and is open every night. The decor and atmosphere at Cunningham's makes you feel that you are part of a happening event. Using a wood fire grill and oven, Cunningham's provides its guests with dishes created from the freshest seasonal and local ingredients possible. Call 410-339-7730 for a reservation. The third Bag Beast has just opened in the new Foundry Row in Owings Mills. Signature super Bag Beast pizzas, salads, sandwiches, pastas, and yes, even submarines. Hey, did I forget meatball subs? Bag Beast Foundry Row is similar to the original Bag Beast in Harbor East. Also featured next door is the Bag Beast Group operated Foundry Row Wine and Spirits. Two more winners for the Bag Beast chain. Call 410-356-7730. 226 that's Bagby's on Reisterstown Road in Owings Mills. Bruce Posner here with a message brought to you by Chesapeake Urology. Guys, if you broke your right arm, would you just say, heck, I'll live with it and make do with the left? Of course not. So why is it so many men with erectile dysfunction throw up their hands, assume it's just a part of getting older, and choose to live with it? The experts at Chesapeake Urology have treatments that can help virtually all men resume a normal sex life. Whether you're 48, 64, or 84, their doctors specialize in ED, and most treatments are covered by insurance. Even if you've tried pills without success, the specialists at Chesapeake Urology can show you better treatments. Don't live with something you don't have to. Call Chesapeake Urology at 877-422-8237. That's 877-422-8237. Since 1915, Atman's Deli has been serving up the best delicatessen in Baltimore on 1019 East Lombard Street. Atman's is open seven days a week with an incredible menu, including all your delights. Call Elaine for all your catering needs at 410-563-2666. Remember, Atman's is open every Ravens game in the stadium at Section 118. Nothing is better for me than a pastrami sandwich at Atman's Deli. Situated at one Olympic place in Towson, Cunningham's Cafe and Bakery offers handcrafted breakfast, lunch, and coffee in a casual setting. Featuring house-baked breads and pastries, roasted coffees, and locally sourced eggs and produce from Cunningham Farms, the cafe and bakery is the perfect spot for a quick meal or snack. Parking is free across the street. Open seven days a week. Call Cunningham's Bakery and Cafe, 410-339-7750. Join 105.7 The Fans game day uncensored before every away football game at the sports bar on the second floor clubhouse at Laurel Park for our pregame show. More at 1057thefan.com. This is the Sports Maven Show, presented by Coons Ford of Security Boulevard. Now, here's the Maven himself, Bruce Posner. Well, the last segment you heard from Bruce on the road. He's away from the microphone today. This is Wayne Viner, intern Mason, Danny Cadu on the other side of the glass. We touched a little bit about Ohio State and Maryland. Boy, 31-point underdog for the Terps today, 4 o'clock game. Mason, you said you got to watch out for these 31-point lines because they're almost a sucker bet. Why, why do you say that? Well, it always goes back to these games, especially the ones where it's Alabama against the Fresno States or the Chattanoogas. That's where this originated in the modern history is this line where if you bet on the other team. Which one's the other team in this case? Which would be the Maryland, Fresno State, uh -huh. weaker SEC teams. They... The Ohio State team puts in their freshman and sophomore, just trying to test things, see who's good. Late in the game with a big and lead. And then 
a few points get scored by Maryland, and they cover the spread. So that's why Maryland will be my pick for the day to cover the 30-point spread. Okay, that makes sense. We'll have to check with uh, AC Payday and our other guys who really follow these lines. Uh, there's a, The game we're going to watch before that is Northwestern and Penn State. you have any read on that one? Well, it's a 14-point line in favor of Penn State at Ryan Field in Evanston. I don't know about this one. Northwestern's offensive line has looked terrible so far this year. They were able to compete last week in Madison. But one of these games, Saquon is not going to play well. I think it's today. Northwestern competes, but they don't win. I have them covering the 14-point spread. So both of you, Danny and Mesa, have brought up the ESPN guys. Half of them seem to hate Northwestern. Uh, Danny, give me give me 10 seconds on why that is. Well, it seems like the other half are all alumni, whether it be Rachel Nichols or Jay Adonde or Michael Wilbon. It seems that a lot of the big wigs, the big names at ESPN, at least on their editorial side, are very, very pro-purple. So if you're not pro-purple, then you went to Syracuse. If you didn't go to Syracuse, you probably went to Maryland, and that's about 98% exactly. yeah. of them. Mason, who are you rooting for today? Is it Northwestern or Penn State? Oh, definitely Northwestern. Is, uh, that, is that a question? I just had a <laughs> jab that, you with that one. Is that, you ta- okay, good. take out whether you like them or not. Points in play here, the 14 points, who do you have? I got Northwestern. I think that that defense, Pat Fitzgerald, they always say you can see it in his eyes, the old linebacker that oh, played for the Wildcats. Oh, I know that feel, Cats. man. They want to get out there and hit somebody. They're going to be jacked up for this game. It's always an interesting crowd there. That's my most interesting thing about Northwestern football. <laughs> it's the uh, lack of crowd or it's, lack it's of the, home it's crowd. It's the huge road crowds. All the time. It, it's the, the Los Angeles Chargers of the Big Ten. Uh, don't, uh, don't get me started on that. Uh, I'll try not to. That's for later. Uh, other games of note. I've got TCU and West Virginia. West Virginia seems to always be, lately, on the verge of national prominence for real, and they just can't pull it off. TCU, but I got a defense that, that they shut down Oklahoma State. Uh, uh, shut downs, uh, it's a loose term in that conference. You know, my favorite, my favorite defense. Oh, right. Your favorite there. defensive conference, but the this, Big 12. This game is going to be interesting. TCU, Gary Patterson finally brought back the defense. He was all about it, and then they flipped into the Big 12 where you can win games 70 something to 60 something. But this week they got an interesting test with Will Greer, the former Florida quarterback, now the West Virginia quarterback. It's going to be interesting. It's in TCU. I got the Horn Frogs pretty big in this one. Well, I know we got a lot of West Virginia fans uh, back in towards Maryland and towards West Virginia who probably are going to give you a hard time over that one. Any other game jump off the page at you? You have some interesting games around, especially the Big Ten tonight. Nebraska gets a big home game against Wisconsin. It's going to be interesting to see the way Mike Riley uses Tanner Lee, the quarterback in this game. I got Wisconsin in that one. And Michigan State, Michigan, it's always a game that seems to be teetering on the edge of a big upset. And and they've replayed that big upset multiple times this week. ESPN trying to drive some ratings towards that. The block kick from two years ago, one of the great plays in college football history. Now, if you had watched the... Tampa New England game, the NFL game on Thursday night, and I'm really have no place to go at this point other than to bring up the show following that was the review of the play that was not a fumble, the tuck rule, which was the Raiders and the Patriots. And it just it sometimes seems like yesterday. I even watching that and seeing what the internet had to say about it and Twitter, that was not a fumble. I don't care because of the rule. Anybody watch that game? He fumbled. Now I understand. Was it a fumble? That's the rule. But I don't know if that changes their history. I don't know if it means they never win a Super Bowl if he fumbles. But that was a strange twist of fate that they start the historic run on a play that anybody would say that had to be a fumble. I, Danny? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that it's the epitome of the NFL kind of getting too much into their heads and trying to make the definitions of what is and isn't a something that seems more clear. I mean, it's the same thing with the catch. I mean, Des Bryant from a couple of years ago in that in that Cowboys playoff game, I mean, like, what is and what isn't a catch? I mean, like, I mean, if you look at from your eyes, that's a catch. If you look from your eyes, that's a fumble. You know, I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's semantic. And it's, it sucks that that basically because the difference between <laughs> dynasties and not dynasties. It's what the bureaucracy of the NFL referees have done to football. They over explain things. 
<laughs> like that ad, which is that a Geico ad? Oh, the guy's yeah. trying to oh, order yeah. dinner. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I like that yeah. one though. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a good commercial. But it's just interesting to see, the, especially the Des Bryant, which is like the most recent catch or tuck rule kind of thing. And then you go out here with your conspiracy theory is that New England would have never won anything. That isn't a conspiracy theory. That is just, you, you don't know how history works. If the Raiders had won that and they go on to great playoff success, they might get one or more free agents and, and maybe things are different. Maybe they're not. Maybe they get frustrated with Brady because he had a chance to win the big game and he didn't, and it affects his psyche, and he never meets Giselle, he never buys a pair of Uggs, and his whole life is different. Y you don't know because that's how the world works. Yeah, it's definitely a butterfly effect sort of thing. There, that's the word I'm looking for, butterfly effect. So can you get a butterfly effect at, at Maryland today? Can you give me a scenario where Maryland finds a way to uh, go two scenarios, stays in the game, and it's a game that can be won in the last possession or two, and or actually wins the game. Mason? Look, it it's all comes down to whether Kevin Wilson and JT Barrett can get the ball moving or not. It's going to be have to be J.C. Jackson and the Maryland cornerbacks stepping up. You know, last year we heard that J.C. Jackson was an NFL talent, and he obviously was not there yet. This year it's looked a little bit oh, better. All right, I got uh, I got to go back to J.C. Keep going. But you still don't know. We have not seen a team with this talent level that has a senior quarterback that is the most has the most touchdown scored in Big Ten football history. Uh, J.C. Jackson did come into Maryland with a lot of hype as a transfer. I found out on Tuesday that he had injured both of his shoulders during the year last year, and he took two years off of football because of academic whatever happened to him and how he got to Maryland. So he's just getting back to being himself. Now, he does wear one of those... Uh, separated shoulder braces if you watch him he wears number seven on defense and he's had some big plays this year and he looks like he's really coming into it I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't really develop to an NFL talent along with him in the defensive backfield to put some pressure on Ohio State is Antoine Brooks he wears number 25 he hits my goodness he's a good football player and go ahead he's just he which, plays which a he? step behind Antoine Brooks and then he comes out with these big hits but then you keep on going throughout this game, and you see Ohio State's defensive line, the best in the nation against Maryland's experienced offensive line. Which team shows up, the one that played against UCF that looked absolutely terrible, or the one that we saw last week that showed extreme grit and pulled through and won the game? I think you're going to get the one that pulled through. I think the UCF game is an aberration. Something went wrong. That's why DJ Durkin was so upset after the game. Yeah, Ohio State has a great defensive line. Uh, they have another Bosa on that line, and they bring a lot of pressure. But one of the ways that you stop an aggressive defensive line is be able to run the ball right at them. And sooner or later, as I've been saying for years, the quality of the recruiting over the past few years is going to come through. I realize that even if you started day one on the Durkin era, this is your 17th game, and you're playing against guys who are fifth-year redshirt seniors who are 22, and my guys are 19. And the difference between a 19-year-old kid and a 22-year-old guy who's been in a weight room and a training program is immense. But our talent, all I want today is to stay in the game. I'm not guaranteeing we're going to yeah. win. I want to go to the fourth quarter thinking I've got a chance. Danny, I know you don't follow it the way we do. This is like me talking to you about the Orioles. Yeah. But from the far, do you see any chance for this? I, I, I see a chance for a good game, and I'm, I'm going to be here watching the game all day, and I, I, I see there, it, there being a chance for at least being a, a couple touchdown game at the end. I, I, I'm rooting for it. I'm holding out hope. There's nothing better than a good game in Gus Johnson. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nothing. Absolutely. Nothing. I want to see a couple Gus Gasms tonight. It'd be great. Gus <laughs> I, I hope you but, get your uh, wish in the nicest way possible. I'm going to go a count and amount. we got about 20 seconds here. Is this, is this for a score? Yeah, yeah this is a score. <laughs> I have Ohio State, sadly, in this one. I'll give it to them 38-24, to but it's a close game, though. And with that, I don't think I can do any better than that. Thanks uh, to Bruce for calling in on his time away, and thanks to Coons Ford for sticking with us for all these years. This has been Wayne Viner, Intern Mason, Denny Cadu. This is the Sports Maven Catch in the Nest tomorrow at 9 a.m. right here on 1300 CBS Sports Radio.